hey, y'all been doing a lot of trainings on domestic violence this month, right? Um, and the more I read these statistics and look at the disparities in justice for victims and people who are just vulnerable, it is so upsetting. It is so frustrating. I have this whole PowerPoint with all these statistics and all this stuff, but I'm just going to sum it up to say this. The term crimes of passion has always bothered me. It always seemed like it was just minimizing a crime. It was minimizing a murder. It was minimizing a violent act committed by somebody who was unable to control their emotions. They were unable to control their jealous rage and they were unable to control the victim. That is what a crime of passion is to me, right? Somebody who was out of control and too emotional to redirect themselves or regulate their emotions, right? Um, and it's crazy because this law was put into place because congressman killed his wife's lover in 1859. Now we don't know all the story. They could have been separated, but it's crazy because a lot of places define crimes of passion as an inability to control one's emotions, resulting in a violent rage against an intimate partner, a familiar victim over an actual or perceived infidelity, an actual or perceived infidelity. So an ex-husband, ex-boyfriend, stalker, random person on the street could come and kill you and say it was a crime of passion because they perceived whatever you did as an infidelity against them. It's just justified killings motivated by jealousy. That's it. And only one subset of the population benefits from it. They get charged with crimes of passion more than any other gender, more than any other, any other race. Even cultural differences where uh, men do honor killings in their families or, you know, for whatever reason, they kill their kids or they kill their wife or whatever for disgracing the family. Um, they get charged with murder, right? Um, other races of men, women who commit these crimes because they are emotional and unable to strain themselves um, end up killing their partner who choose to kill their partners in these fits of rage. They're charged with just straight up murder. Sometimes they can get manslaughter depending on the lawyer, depending on the situation. But there's children who have been sex trafficked, who have killed their sex traffickers for self-defense reasons, who have been charged with murder. But these grown men, these emotional, fragile grown men are given a more lenient sentence because they were just too emotional to refrain from killing their partner, their ex, their victim, their victim's lover, whomever they killed. They were just too emotional to refrain from taking somebody's life. And then you have teens like Piper Lewis, who was from Iowa, who was ordered to pay $150,000 to her sex trafficker's family for killing him. She has to do five years probation. And if she does anything while on probation, she has to serve 20 years. When she asked the governor for a pardon, he denied it. The judge talking crazy to her because she failed to check in for some of her, um, for the probation, to the probation officer a couple times and whatever. She did do something traumatic. She probably didn't want to leave her house, whatever the situation may be. Um, he talking crazy, talking about, you ask for a second chance, you don't get a third chance. Okay. I know some people have done horrific things. They got two and three and 500 chances. Okay, so let's not. Anyway, then you have the young lady. Then you have Santoya Brown, who served 15 years in prison for killing her sex trafficker, right? Just now granted clem clemency, not too long ago. What year was that? 2019. She was finally granted clemency. After doing 15 years of hard time for defending herself, for protecting herself. That is asinine to me. That's asinine. Then you get me in like Patricia Birmingham's husband. Carrie Birmingham, who shot his wife outside on video and told her, okay, you're going to meet your maker before shooting her and killing her. Who was convicted and received 10 years by all woman jury. All women convicted him of 10 years for his crime of passion, for killing his wife unarmed outside in front of everybody 
and told her, you're going to meet your maker. Make that make sense. And shot his gun three times. And that was May of, the, uh, May of March. That was March of this year. So this foolishness continues. And then we have another man. What's his name? Michael Rusko, Rusko, I don't know, R-U-S-C-O-E child, was sentenced to two years for killing somebody for sudden passion in Austin. And UCLA did a study in 2001 that shows that uh, people who are men, some men, who commit crimes when they're under the influence and um, they become violent, they get a 36% more lenient sentence. So Jamie Foxx made that song, Blame It On Alcohol. This appeal wouldn't work for him, but he made the song that this crime of passion crap, this crime of passion foolishness just needs to go. Especially since we can't use self-defense legitimately, which is legi a legitimate reason to off somebody. We can't do that. But you could kill somebody in your front yard and say you're about to go meet Jesus and get 10 years, but you have kids being sex trafficked who defend themselves and they get 15 years, actually life. She was sentenced to life. They just granted her clemency not too long ago. Get out of here, okay? We have to do better, like. Come on, get